Welcome to 5-Minute Hacks, the series that shows that knowledge is power. In each episode, we'll explore various ways to learn about hacking and how to use Project Discovery's open source tools, all in quick 5-minute segments. Get ready to learn some amazing hacks and have some fun along the way. And remember, there's always more to discover, so join us and let's get hacking. In today's video, we're going to take a look at a common attack technique and how you can use Nuclei to automate testing to see if your environment is vulnerable to it. Credential stuffing. But first, what is credential stuffing? Let's look at this very common type of attack. Credential stuffing is a type of cyber attack where hackers use leaked usernames and passwords in bulk to gain unauthorized access to user accounts. By using automated scripts, attackers attempt to log into various online platforms, capitalizing on the fact that many users have insecure passwords or reuse their credentials across multiple sites. Let's first take a look at an example Nuclei template that can be used to create a credential stuffing attack on a GitLab server. The template takes in two variables as we'd expect, a username and password. Then, using the HTTP module, we first make a GET request to the provided hostname slash users slash sign in. Then once that succeeds, we make a POST call to attempt to log in using the provided username and password to create the authenticity token that GitLab expects in the body of that POST. To check if the attack was successful, the matchers look to make sure we are redirected and that a login was not invalid. If those matchers are both matched, this template returns a positive result. Here's how this might work in a real world scenario. Let's say we want to check out our own self-hosted instance of GitLab for known username and password combinations. To do that, we'd run Nuclei with dash U and the URL of our instance. Then we'd select the template with dash T and the path to our template. You can find a whole set of credential stuffing templates under the HTTP folder and credential stuffing. In this case, we're going to use the GitLab login check template. We'll then pass a known username and password. Nuclear will run and substitute those variables in the template where we saw them earlier. That works great if we want to test username and passwords one at a time, but what if we want to check a large list of known usernames and passwords? Well, we can also pass a text file to those variables. Let's say we have one text file emails.txt with emails and passwords.txt with passwords. We can just pass those files in as variables just like this. By default, the method that Nuclei uses to stuff those credentials from the file is called pitchfork. This means it will read each file one line at a time and take the first line from the emails.txt and the first line from the passwords.txt as the variables. Then it will move to the second line in each file, the third line, and so on. So the combination of usernames and passwords will be used to test will look something like this. Both files must have the same number of lines as each one will be combined with its corresponding partner in the other file. But this isn't the only way Nuclei can use these files. It can also use an attack method called clusterbomb to combine each username with each password to test for weak credentials. In this method, Nuclei will start with the first line of the emails.txt file and try every password in the password.txt file. Then move on to try the second email with each password and so on. Using this method, you can test multiple usernames and passwords with just one command. To use this method, we can use the same command as before and just add dash at for attack type and specify cluster bomb like this. With credential stuffing, findings are listed as critical as the username and password combination for a user may have been exposed in the data set used for the test. So, we've seen how with Nuclei you can easily detect your system's vulnerability to credential stuffing attacks. And while running these types of attacks continuously is an important part of any offensive security program, there are also methods you can employ to help protect your organization against these type of attacks. Requiring multi-factor authentication, monitoring for patterns indicative of credential stuffing, educating users about the importance of using strong unique passwords, and implementing rate limiting and CAPTCHA to thwart automated login attempts can all help to prevent the ability of an attacker to utilize credential stuffing attacks. And once those defenses are in place, automating weak credential detection across your portals by using Nuclei in your security pipeline can help ensure attackers won't be able to use credential stuffing as a foothold into your organization's systems. Thank you for joining us for this 5-Minute Hack. We hope you discovered something new. If you want to stay in touch with Project Discovery, join our Discord server at nux.gg slash discord. That's nux.gg slash discord. Until then, happy hacking.